So we had an election last week and I'm we did. And we do have a couple of election related. What the fuck is wrong with you? Of course. I, of course. I am going to, however, tell the channel that if you start acting like little bitches about this, like partisan assholes. Like, oh my God. like raving. My God didn't win. Yes. Like raving cocksores. We will kick you. So, just so you know, this is not about political alignments. This is this is about stupid. Sometimes they and intersect. Stupid, stupid knows no party. Oh yeah. Stupid always reaches across the aisle. All right. So, are you are we ready to begin? Let's begin. Let's Let it begin. Let it begin. Each week, Catherine goes out worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible shit, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And there is something in America, and it's probably elsewhere, but America, just so if you don't live here, you can write in a presidential vote if you so desire. And I'm going to show you guys a map here. This is from Google. This is the uh, election results from Google. And um, I'm going to put it up on the big screen because there's something you'll want to take note of here. I'll tell Tara as well. Um, Because you have to push buttons, so I'll just go ahead and tell you. Uh, You'll note that Barack Obama, 50.6% of the vote. Mitt Romney, 47.9%. Gary Johnson, 1%. And Roseanne Barr. Less than 1% of the vote. 50,000 people voted for Roseanne Barr. Wow. Okay. Your decision-making privileges, they've been revoked. Was she on a party ticket? No! No! She wasn't a write-in. She wasn't on the... I don't know. 50,000. Let's see. I've seen any other celebrities on this list. None of these candidates. Uh, yeah. Nope. Just just Roseanne Barr. Apparently she was on the ticket. What ticket the was? She, she wasn't on my ticket. She wasn't on the ticket, ticket in my either. state. Roseanne fucking Barr. Mike is saying she was on the ticket in California. For the Peace what? and Freedom Party. She wasn't on the ballot in Connecticut. But apparently she was on the ballot in some states. Roseanne Barr thought she had an actual honest to God chance of becoming president of the United States. Ronald Reagan became president of the United States. Ronald Reagan didn't, while singing the national anthem, grab his crotch and spit. Yeah, you know what? We are a stone's throw away from President Camacho, <laughs> the heavyweight champion. <laughs> so Ooh. I wouldn't get too precious about that whole thing. Well, you know, it's funny you bring there up. There are still people who think the president was born in fucking Kenya. It's 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 funny you bring up the wrestling because um, some people are very supportive of their candidates. They go to great lengths to show their support. You remember Obama girl and all that? That's silly bullshit. Well, we have one guy who uh, really went all out for his candidate. Now he probably wishes he hadn't. Um, Yeah, I saw this. He got paid a lot of money for it, though. Eric Hartsburg tattoos Mitt Romney logo onto forehead. Speaks out. It's quite possible that no one is more upset about Mitt Romney's loss than Eric Hartsburg. Pro wrestler from Indiana permanently tattooed Romney's presidential campaign logo on his face. Uh, He was paid $5,000 to do so after he put his face up for sale on eBay. He has no regrets, but he's disappointed by the election results. I'm the guy who... Oh, God. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, read that quote. Oh, God. I'm the guy who has egg all over his face, but instead of egg... It's a big Romney Ryan tattoo. Instead of egg, it's permanent ink. Wah, wah. I can actually hear 
the Mark Wahlberg voice in my head from book. Bo- Remember Mark Wahlberg Boogie Nights? No, mm-hmm. I, don't I, I remember that voice. I can just hear that voice in my head reading that quote. I'm the guy who has egg all over his face, but instead of egg, it's a big Romney Ryan logo. Here's the thing. Even if Romney had won, that tattoo is only going to be relevant for eight, four to eight years. Yes. Tops. Tops. Because what, what, what are you going to do when you're, you're 50, when you're 60, and you still have a thing in your face, and no one knows what the fuck it is? I mean, and it's not even somewhere you can grow your hair over it. Like, no. that, is, uh, that is straight up, like, on his face. Well, if, you could, if he can grow hair on, in that area, I'm impressed. That's a lot of testosterone, if hair can, can grow right there. Um... I, for the first time this weekend, experienced a show called Tattoo Nightmares. Apparently, there's a tattoo parlor in L.A. that specializes in covering bad tattoos. Like, that's their niche, and they have a reality show. So maybe they can help this guy out. I know. Can they, like, do a little thingy to, to fix it? No, I mean, no, you could dude. turn it into a couple of Pepsi logos merged maybe. somehow. Don't do this shit. I mean, they could probably turn it into some sort of American flag thing. Yeah. But, yeah, relevancy, people. Relevancy. Unless you're Mike Tyson, the face tattoo, probably not a great idea in the first place. And if you're Mike Tyson, yeah, no one's expecting any better of you, Mikey. And if, if no matter what you get, you know, you want something that's going to be relevant for more than a hot minute. Yeah. Like, do not get the names of the guys in one direction tattooed on you, because I guarantee you they are not in it for the long haul no okay so let's get to the honest to god crazy and it's florida wowzers um driver throws food knife while fleeing trooper newport richie man faces multiple charges you gotta listen to this one it's amazing after a florida highway patrol trooper noted he was not wearing a seatbelt. According to an arrest report, the trooper could see the seatbelt dangling in the retracted position. Uh, he pulled over the driver, but things took a strange turn as the driver passed his patrol vehicle. The driver stared at the trooper and began, quote, to laugh uncontrollably, pointing at him. When the trooper attempted to pull him over, Martinez continued to drive, then suddenly stopped in an attempt for me to crash my patrol vehicle into his vehicle He then threw a bag of food out his window toward the patrol vehicle and kept driving. Then he began waving a knife out of the driver's side window and threw it at the patrol car. This is what we call compounding the error. Yes! Dude, it was just a seatbelt! You're not going to, first of all, your insurance fraud scam of getting rear-ended is not going to work on the cops. Because they no. have cameras yes. that will show you slamming on the brakes. So, you know, points for creativity, all points for red acted for being an idiot. Also, when you're facing the cops, this is probably not a good reaction. <laughs> not a good reaction. Maybe not, not a good... the cop had spinach in his teeth or something. Also... You're driving a car. You are in a car chase. It's a car. You threw a knife. Don't bring a knife to a car chase. No. Don't bring a knife to a car fight. I would I would say the Sean Connery line, but it has a terrible ethnic slur, so I'm not going to do that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe don't throw your food out the window at him either, or your recycling. Oh, it gets even. Generally, be- just don't throw things at the cops. They don't like it. It gets better. The uh, trooper successfully performed a an immo- immobilization technique on the uh, on the car. Uh, Martinez crawled out of the driver's side window and approached the trooper, who had his dr- gun drawn in a threatening manner. After noting that Martinez did not have a weapon in his hands, the trooper drew back his gun and pushed Martinez back toward his vehicle, where responding sheriff's deputies tased him. 
What is an immobilization maneuver on a car? It's when they flip the fucker or or, or pit it. Oh, you know? okay. I'm picturing like submission holds, and I'm like, how do you do that to a car? Yeah, it's... was this cop Thor? <laughs> Obviously, I don't get in a lot of car chases. No, so thank God. Know. Oh, uh, yeah, he suplexed the motherfucker. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty badass. I mean, that's the cop of the year right there. That's another thing. Who walks up to a guy who has a gun drawn on, on you and goes. Who does that shit? Bruce Willis in about every movie I've ever seen. OK, yeah, yeah, that's fair. It's fair. So, um, this is another case of really they're still doing this. We have recurring motifs on the show. And they're all sad. They are all sad. They happen again and again and again. And uh, yeah, this one. <sighs> Drunk man walks into a home, fixes himself dinner and makes off with a box of Klondike bars as couple sleeps on the couch. And the opening line is the most predictable. What would you do we for a think of. bar? And here, let's let's get him on the big screen. You got to see him. Was it sad? He does. He does. Um, he also has the narrowest chin I've ever seen. Like his face is like it's been put through a funnel. Oh. According to Scranton Police, Steve Johnson, 24, broke into a home early Thursday and helped himself to an extravagant dinner of steak clams, shrimp, and crab legs. Wash it down with coconut rum and vanilla vodka before escaping with a box of Klondike bars. Wow, I would not have imagined all of that fitting in him. Might have made a clean getaway if he hadn't startled the owners who were sleeping on the couch and Johnson strolled in and tucked into a servant turf spread. The owner was up as Mr. Johnson who prepared himself a to-go bag that included more food, booze, and a pack of cigarettes. Watched him walk out the kitchen, out the front door, taking with him a box of Klondike bars for dessert. Why would you? It's not it a 7-Eleven. Was... Yeah. And the thing is, like. That that, that whole package of Klondike bars isn't going to keep very long. Just no. take one. The rest are just going to waste. You don't have a freezer. And he walks into someone's house and makes off and fills himself on all the good food. You fucking asshole. Yeah, like he didn't break up the spam. No, he got the steak and the lobster and the crab's legs. And he got the rum and the vodka. Who keeps like steak, lobster and crab legs in their home? Like were they having a dinner party? Maybe. Do people just keep that? Because, I mean, I, if it don't go in the microwave, I don't make it. So I don't know. I'm sure he got in there and he thought, cha-ching. But those Klondike bars were just going to go to waste. They were going to melt before you got to eat them. That was dumb. I just, I love, I love that that's where you go to. It's not the. It's just not practical. It's not the someone wandering into someone else's house and emptying their fucking larder. No, no. Well, I'm used to that. <laughs> At least he was wearing clothes. No, no, it's like, why are you so wasteful? It's true. If you have to steal, only steal what you're actually going to use. Otherwise, it's just rude. Eat, is that sort of like eat what you kill? Or, you know? Yes. <laughs> uh. Don't steal more than you can use. Also, I hope he cooked that shit. And if he did cook it, how the hell did they sleep through that? They must have been dead drunk. I don't know about you, but when people are cooking shit in the in the kitchen, that gets kind of loud. Not necessarily. You were a stealth cooker? No, I um, my, my ex-husband once was asleep and I wanted a cheeseburger and I didn't want to wake him up. So I tried to broil a cheeseburger on myself on the broiler. Unfortunately, I de didn't properly degrease the pan or something, and I wound up setting the oven on fire, none of which woke him up. I had to go and wake him up and explain that there were flames pouring out of the oven, and could he please help me put them out? 
So it kind of backfired because I wasn't going to wake him up to cook and I wound up having to wake him up to put out the fire. Why do these... This is, all of this these, is why I don't make things that don't go in the microwave. Cause all, all of these stories end in tragedy. <laughs> all of them. Yeah, I'm not so much domesticated. Okay, so sometimes we have thieves who are baffling and don't seem to get the concept. And this guy from New York, and yeah, he, he, he kind of missed the point here. Thief steals Chinese food delivery man's car, makes deliveries. Kind of lost the plot, my friend. After stealing a car of a Chinese food delivery man, uh, Keith Hines decided he could make a few extra bucks by making the remaining deliveries himself, and that ambitious decision would soon lead to his arrest. When the Chinese West Hartford, Connecticut, yeah, that's, represent that's not, it's about an hour north of me. Um, when the delivery driver realized his car has been stolen, he had left it running. Don't do that. He called the police. He also told his boss to inform the restaurant's customers they wouldn't be getting their orders because of the car theft. Surprise! But it turned out that one of the orders had already been delivered, presumably by the car thief, uh, because the last two deliveries the thief had been had um, been made in Hartford. Uh, police were notified, and the thief was subsequently arrested, charged with larceny. He was also in possession of a joint, a crat pipe, some Seroquel, antipsychotic drug in a bag, and was charged with possession. Ah, uh, okay. Wow, that's all really counterintuitive. Uppers, downers, antipsychotics. You got yourself three drugs that do three very different things. You take those at the same time, your brain is just going to be like, fuck you and drip out your ears. I quit. I goddamn quit. Yeah, your brain's just going to be like, fuck this shit. I do love, however, that even being this fucked up or having this these many drugs on him, he still was of the presence of mind to think, hey, got a car. Why don't I go for the twofer here? And I do have to admire the 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 gumption, the chutzpah, as it were, of, of the, the the moxie, perhaps that that just to. Okay, the the, the fucking, On Long Island, we just say the balls. Yeah, the fucking balls to, to go up to people's houses and deliver their fucking food to get the extra you gotta money. Respect the ingenuity, though. It is. It's it's kind of it's kind of brilliant. I mean, if we're being honest, I probably would have just eaten all that food. I would have been like, hell yeah, car and free Chinese food, <laughs> fucking bonus. He did have a joint, so yeah, I'm, I'm, that's another thing. I'm amazed he did not devour it all himself. I don't need the pot. I just would have been like, hey, chicken and broccoli in here. Awesome. And uh, we have more delivery shenanigans. Uh, this is uh, from Indianapolis. Um, that This guy kind of has a has a problem uh, estimating value, I think. Um, after crashing his Mustang into a far east side home, Indianapolis man had one question for the homeowner. You want some pizza? <clears throat> uh, William Kais, 41, crashed into the home's garage. Uh, and then he uh, <laughs> police department officers found a pizza box and a bottle of hot sauce in the back of Keese's car after the accident. He told police he drank five beers while waiting for the pizza at a friend's house. He then left the house and was eating a slice and his foot became somehow <laughs> stuck on the gas pedal. Somehow, <laughs> somehow. He could not brake to stop the vehicle, causing it to crash the home. Uh, homeowner heard the sound of an engine racing and then felt the house shake. Homeowner walked his garage, and when uh, Keith stepped out of the car and asked the homeowner if he wanted some pizza. Well, sharing is caring. Yeah, uh, points for being considerate there. Yeah. On that, 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 you know. You know what? If you've had five beers at your friend's house waiting for the pizza, just eat the fucking pizza at your friend's place. It's not to go at that point. No. If you had time to drink five beers waiting for that pizza, you're probably not in a hurry. Yes. Just eat the pizza there. <laughs> Where the fuck do you have to be? 
I wonder if the guy doesn't the story doesn't indicate if he accepted the pizza or not. At that point, you might as well. Yeah, I know. It's like you've got this guy, this asshole. You got a hole in your house. You might as well get some fucking pepperoni out of it. It's like. Yeah, give me peace. Give me peace. Yeah. What, you got to You got to start looking for Ashton Kutcher in your bushes at that point, though. <laughs> you really do. You honestly have to do like, OK, very funny, very funny. But why, man? And I love, I love the 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 mug shot. He looks so bewildered. Well, he's drunk off his fucking ass. <laughs> he kind of looks like a bulldog, a little bit. It's precious. He's completely drunk. He is toasted. He is so toasted. Oh, poor guy! You freaking drunk driving asshole. Yeah, I don't feel a ton of sympathy no. for him. Luckily, no. he only killed a garage. No. Yeah. So, um, we both had fun run-ins with security and stuff, and, and we, we, we pretty much acknowledged that the one thing officers don't like to deal with or hear or, or consider is that there may be explosives in their vicinity. It kind of tweaks them out a bit. Mm-hmm. So this is probably... I would say that tweaks most people out a bit. So that being said, this is probably not the best way to handle this situation. Man with grenade walks into Detroit police station, says, quote, look what I found. Police Can officer. I keep it? <laughs> it followed me home. Finders keepers. Officers and prisoners have returned to Eastern District Headquarters after a man brought a grenade in a flower pot into the building Friday, prompting an evacuation. Um, a guy walked up with an explosive device in a flower pot after cleaning his mother's backyard, uh, said the uh, Eastern District Commander Stephen DeLunt. Um, basically, he walked up. I met him at the door and he said he found it under his mother's porch. I told him to set it back outside. Um, here, it, they, then they evacuated the building. Here's the thing. Grenades, as I understand it, are pretty portable. Instead of evacuating the entire police station, why don't you just carry the fucking grenade down the block? Well, um, here's where we're going to get into some science here. Uh, Lost. You remember Lost? No. Do I remember Lost? I just got a Lost trivia off with Dr. Nerd Love, and we called it a draw. <laughs> Happened on Twitter, people. Okay, so, um... You remember the bit with the dynamite? Arst! Arst. You got some you got arst some on. Arst on you. Yeah, you remember that? That's because yeah. arst, TNT, he, he, he tried to explain that old dynamite sweats. Right, sweats, nitroglycerin. Pure nitroglycerin. Um, this was a World War II grenade that was made with TNT. Mm. So that whole carry it outside, yes, probably a good instinct. However, oh fuck. It's at that point you're just sort of like, please set that down very carefully, sir. All right, fair. Yeah. I just... You know, if I saw a grenade in my yard, my first instinct would not to be, oh, wow, look at this. Huh. Hey, check you this out, guys. It, and you would throw it at the neighbors. Don't lie. <laughs> okay, Don't your, lie. your, your first, first instinct is would be to go and get your camera so you could film yourself throwing it at the neighbors. Don't lie. Okay, your first instinct would not be to pick it up. My first instinct would be to get as far the fuck away from it as possible right. and call my friend the Marine to come and deal with it. Or 911. I honestly would probably call my friend Nathan the Marine. Does he Just be like, hey, guess what I found? Could you come deal with that? Thanks. Does he have a bomb robot? No, but I just assume he knows how to deal with that shit. He's also my I need a body to disappear guy. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. 
everybody needs one. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's that's the, the the simple thing. Most people see explosives, a grenade in particular, in the back of their mind goes, "Oh shit, run!" Because most people, I don't know about Unless you, you're Captain America, and then you jump on it. Oh, Chris Evans. I don't. I don't think he was Captain America. Call me crazy. Don't think this he was guy. Captain no, I probably not. Not, not cap. Not Captain. America. Um. Okay. You want to talk about sore losers? Wow, this guy, this fucking guy. Um, you ever got in trouble for something you did at work, rightly yeah. or wrongly? Mm -hmm. and, and you've had its consequences all the way up to and including getting fired for it. I have had that. However. I would expect this guy in his job to have a little more decorum, but then maybe I expect too much. This comes from Dallas. Judge throws Dallas attorney back in jail after his design district office trashed, vandalized with obscene drawings. State district judge. What? An attorney. Yep. State district judge ordered disbarred Dallas attorney Tom Correa back in jail this morning because he allegedly trashed his design district office and drew penises all over the walls after being evicted last month. And oh, look at him. Look at that face. Isn't he precious? He looks angry. Look at that face. Somebody's grumpy. Korea was charged earlier this year with four felonies alleging he stole from clients. He was arrested, posted bond and released weeks later. He was evicted for not paying rent for his upscale office. The president of the real estate company that represents the building showed up the next day and checked out the property. He found, quote, complete destruction, including penis graffiti on every single wall throughout the building. Oh, it gets worse. Written next to some of the penises was the name Doug. Was what name? Doug. Um, Molly said it appeared it took a sledgehammer to granite counters. Uh, doors, light fixtures, cabinets, and appliances were destroyed or removed. There was feces and urine on the floor. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, wow. So this guy charged with felonies, he's out on bail. Yeah, the, the really smart. It's always smart when you're out on bail for felonies to commit more crimes. It's, it's not like, you know, yeah, it, it's not like they'll never suspect you. It's not like yeah. they'll they'll you're actually the first person they'd probably suspect yes. in that particular instance. You are bad at crime, sir. You, you, you are not, in fact, a criminal mastermind. No, you are not. And you also may all you also not only are a pre the president of the hair club for men, you're also a member. Um, sorry. No, he's not. He's, yeah, he's not. He's really not. He's not. He's more like the president of the Shia head club for men. He does. It's, it's all poofy. Um, you're eight years of school is required to become a lawyer. Am I wrong about that? Eight years plus a really, really difficult bar exam you have to pass. And after doing all that, this man still the first thing that came to mind was to shit on the floor and draw dicks on everything. And the irony is, it's eight years of school on a really difficult test about the law. So you're, you'd like to think that this would be a person that would understand how the law works. You would. How bail works. And, and would know that this was not a smart plan. I think this kind of proves that the heart of every man, every man walking the planet, there is a bro. I, I think it's sad to say that deep inside, 
we're all dude bros and it's just- somebody keeps pointing out but this is texas you know what i refuse to believe that everybody in texas is a fucking moron <laughs> yeah I- I refuse to believe that i mean maybe i'm wrong i've never been to texas isn't mike judge from texas i don't know idiocracy guy I yeah i know who mike judge yeah, is i, I don't know i thought he was from texas of course he also did be with some butthead so you know okay yeah that's true that's true but you know i i've never been to texas but i'm gonna go ahead and assume not not morons yes not everybody there is a complete and utter mental sahara may Maybe I'm just being idealistic, but I don't think that's a fair argument for this. So I guess the first thing we learned tonight is um, a little bit about crime and suspects and bail. And honestly, I think We've learned that you can go to school for eight years and still poop on the floor. You can pretty much poop on the floor no matter what your level of education, I think. To have the inclination. More of a basic bodily function than anything else. To to have the very inclination to go, I'm going to poop on the floor. Eight years of college. I'm a poop on the floor. And draw dicks on things. Yeah, but you know what? Every time some poor asshole gets drunk and passes out at a party, somebody wants to draw a dick on their face. I really think (laughs) you're just so fucking obsessed with your own dicks. We're all dude bros, man. That you want everybody to see them and you want to draw them on everything and you want to be touching it or have someone else touching it all the time. Like, it's just this weird obsession that comes with the Y chromosome. All dude bros. With your own bait and tackle. All men at heart. Dude bros. Just. So I don't even, like, the drawing dicks on stuff, not even that weird to me, because that's what dudes do. (laughs) Um, we learned that you should plan your tattoos for longevity. Yeah, you got to think long term with that shit. Yeah. Um, Batman, probably a good symbol. I'll stay around for a while. Uh, You know, Superman, stuff like that. You know, insignias. A little Calvin pissing on something. Probably not so much. Probably Mm -hmm. not so much. Um, Political candidates. No, don't don't put them on your face. And maybe not on your face. Yeah, you might you might want a job someday. You might. Well, actually, I thought putting political candidates on your face was a good way to get a job. Well, not the Mormon ones. (laughs) Uh, That dude doesn't even drink coffee. I don't think he's sitting on anybody's face for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We've learned never bring a knife to a car, Chase. No, car is going to win. And also, you could, that that subduing a car does not mean suplexing it. That's it. That was educational. I did not know that. Um, I didn't know you could subdue a car unless it was Herbie the Love Bug. We've learned that years and years later, you cannot stop reporters from making awful Klondike bar jokes if the story involves a Klondike bar. You- and only steal what you can use. Be practical. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? With a box of melted ass Klondike bars. You're just going to get sticky and messy and gross and not in a fun way. No, not in a fun way. Um, we've learned that. Uh, we learned that Roseanne was on the presidential ticket in some states. And I was not aware of that. 50,000 people wanted her to be president. 50,000 people voted for her. I just think it's because, you know, they thought John Goodman would make such a good first lady. <laughs> um, and we, we learned that uh, even though you're driving drunk, it's no excuse not to be polite. It's true. True. You, you can you can be a drunk driving dickhead and still share have, your snacks. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, and and finally, we learned if you happen upon an explosive in your vicinity that you were, you know, just 
random explosive. Run! Maybe call for help and have them come to you instead of just carrying it around willy nilly. You ever seen mom and dad save the world? No. There's this thing called a light grenade in that because it's a planet full of idiots. And you know how it works? It'll kill you if you pick it up. Is that a real thing? No. Oh. I know fuck all about explosives, obviously. And you know why you would pick it up? Because it has pick me up written on it. That's. That would work in Wonderland. It's it's an idiot planet, so. Oh, okay. But yeah, uh, we, we've learned many, many things tonight. Gunflyer says he voted for Christina Hendricks. She definitely was not on the ticket in Connecticut. No, she, she was not on the ticket. This hippo smells like maple syrup. Oh, 